Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you're calling in from. My name is Jessica Pierce and Happy New Year. We are so excited to have you joining us today at our kickoff event of the year. We hope that it will be full of resources and connections and hope and uh, we're thrilled you're here. I was kind of scrolling through um, some of the representation we have on the line. I see Arizona, New Jersey, Texas, Nebraska. I know I missed some. Um, New York City is in, in the house. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for being here. If you could go ahead, if you haven't yet, drop in the chat um, where you're joining us from. Iowa, I am. Uh, my husband's from Iowa. He would be really happy to hear that, Amy. Um, so where you're joining us from and um, either a target industry or a job type that you are looking for today that you are considering for the future. So I'm also going to be asking for your LinkedIn profile uh, link in just a little bit, and I will explain how um, you can pull that and drop that in. But if you already have that, feel free to drop that in because we're all about connections here. This is Career Connectors, and we want all of you connecting with each other. So Illinois, uh, Colorado, hello, hello, glad to have you guys here. All right, so a couple things to walk through today. Uh, a little bit about Career Connectors. We are all about building stronger communities, and we do that through the job format. And so we're building it one career at a time. We're here to provide those resources and connections to help you elevate your career, to help you maybe transition into a new career, or if you were part of a recent layoff to find your next step. And so that is our goal and our vision. And um, it's all about empowering you to help you find the right next thing. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through some of the technology, some of the tech parts of this event. If you could, if you haven't yet, could you find the chat button on your screen? It is for, mo for if you're on a desktop or a computer, go to the bottom and there should be a chat icon. You can use that, click on that and open it up. And that's where you'll start to see we're already starting to engage with each other. So if you could just drop in where you're calling in from and your industry or job type, that would be great. So that's how we're kind of testing and check, making sure it's working. If you're on your phone, often it's on the top right. There's a couple dots. It can be in that. So there are a couple different places you can find it. Um, on an iPad, it's sometimes on the bottom right. And then you'll see a chat option, a chat icon or an option. The other thing I want you to do is make sure you have the best experience possible today by your view of the presentation and our speakers. So you will see a presentation during the call today for the first um, more than, about the first hour and a half or so, you'll see a presentation, but I also want you to see our wonderful speakers. And so if you could go, uh, if you're on a desktop to view mode, and this would be in your top right, you will see view. There is a side-by-side -side speaker view, and that will give you the presentation and then it will also give you the view of the speaker and the person that's actually talking at that time. For example, if you're on speaker view right now, you would see the presentation and then you'd see uh, my big blonde hair, okay? <laughs> so you would see me speaking. Um, and then when we change speakers, of course the speaker would change. And so if you have speaker view, side-by-side -side speaker view is the best way to watch this call today. And then after we get through, have our speakers today, we will be doing what are called breakout sessions or networking um, sessions. And so stay uh, until that time, because what's going to happen is all of our speakers and then a ton of resources, resume writers, LinkedIn coaches, career coaches, et cetera, are, are jumping on the call and they're available for you to engage with. Ask questions about your LinkedIn profile, ask questions about your resume. Uh, take a look at your resume, those kind of things, and provide guidance and coaching. And so that happens at the end. All right. So um, if you are interested in closed captioning, that is an option on here. It's at the, if you're on your desktop or your computer, it's at the bottom. You can click uh, show captions, and that will show the closed captioning option that is available. All right. Now, um, what I'm, what I would love for you guys to see what we're doing here today is um, this is the presentation, this is the topics, 
these are the topics we have. You're going to hear from Varid Kogan. You guys, she's fantastic and will be really engaging with you on mindset. We thought getting the year kicking off, oh, we need to do something around mindset. And so Varid is going to be walking us through that and, um, and applying it to your career and how you are set and ready to go. And then you're going to hear from the CEO of Dress for Success Phoenix, uh, Tamala Macbeth. I am thrilled she is here as well. She and I met last year and um, it was, I just loved, loved meeting with her. And uh, so she's going to talk, be on here talking about image and branding and a, a little bit about how we present ourselves. And, uh, you know, we, the world has kind of changed since uh, the COVID year. And so from here, uh, she's going to be giving us some tips. Then we'll do some closing comments at the end, some additional resources. And then that's when we will go into our breakout rooms. Okay, uh, real quick, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to drop in your LinkedIn profile. And so to drop in your LinkedIn URL, uh, you're just going to go, if you have another browser open, you're just going to go to LinkedIn. And then the easiest way for me to find it is I just click on my picture. If you click on your picture, then you're going to get a URL in your search bar, in your browser bar, and you're going to copy and paste that. And the important thing is, I just did it in the chat, is that it is blue. Because if it's blue, that means it's clickable. And so the way that you make it blue is you just do a, You can do a right click copy and then drop it in and um, paste it and it'll, it should be blue. Sometimes it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, then um, my team will go find you and then drop it in for you and uh, so that it's blue. But the reason we do this is because this is a virtual format and we want you connecting. We want you engaging with each other. And so oftentimes the best way to get a job is through somebody else who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And that is what our goal is here, is for us to have some connections. So great. Thank you, Susan, Matthew, Dory. Great. Good to see all of you um, dropping in your URL. Please connect with each other. I will be connecting with many of you. It's just kind of a fun thing I do while during our event. Now, I have one more question before we get started. Some of us every year set goals for New Year's. What's 2023 going to look like? Some of us set a word of the year. So what, you know, um, if you've heard of this concept, instead of uh, setting goals, you focus on a particular theme or word. And uh, that, I, that's what I do. And I typically choose words that are really super positive, brave, joy, refresh, something like that. Um, well, I'll tell you what, 2021 and 2022 have been a couple years in my life. And so my word of the year is forgive. And I know there's some forgiveness that I need to do that's holding me back. And so that's going to be my word of the year. I'm just claiming it right now. That's how it is. It's going to be forgive. I would love to hear your word of the year. So I see perseverance already. Gratitude is already balance. Oh my gosh, Jen, that is a great word. Shift. Love it. Um, if you don't have a word of the year, but you have a goal or a focus, I would, we would love to see that in the chat. So um, I'm going to write mine because if I don't write it down, then, you know, uh, there we go. Passion, re-blossom, restart. Listen, look at these words, you guys. So if you don't have a word of the year or focus, scroll through this because there's some fantastic words on here. Expand, uh, civility. Well, if we could all just have that and focus on that, we would have a wonderful, wonderful uh, place to be all the time. Stability, growth, good. Ah. Uh, I've got somebody with forgiveness. God, thank you. Thank you for having my back on that. Um, all right. So, so much good stuff today, you guys. Uh, thank you for being here again. And I am so honored to introduce our first speaker of the day. Barry Kogan is a leading behavioral and mindset expert who specializes in helping individuals and teams release the mental and emotional obstacles that prevent them from adapting to change. She is an executive coach accredited by the International Coach Federation, the ICF, and is a certified practitioner of numerous modalities for rapid transform transformational change, such as neuro-linguistic programming, hypnotherapy, heart math, havening techniques, and EFT tapping. She is the CEO of Momentum Institute, 
a global training and coaching organization, and hosts a top-rated weekly podcast called The Mindset Game, offering evidence-based tools and interviews with leading experts to help you experience even more joy, well-being, and success in our increasingly complex world. Varid has been an advocate of Career Connectors for many years. I have been blessed with getting to see her career just take off, and it is our honor to have you back. Welcome, Varid Kogan. Thank you so much, Jessica. <laughs> it really is just a treat to be here with all of you and uh, to kick off this new year. And I'm so glad, Jessica, that you invited us all to consider or reconsider our word of the year. And I saw many words like shift, growth, stability, restart, peace, appreciate, love. And what's really cool is in this presentation, you're going to learn how to really embody those, um, those energies, if you will, and, and really stay focused on them. And, you know, this is really exciting because it is a kickoff event and it is a new year, a happy new year. And so as we transition into this new year, having said goodbye to the old year, um, we want to experience even more ease and create 2023 the way that we want it in the highest and best way for us and for others. So I really honor you all for being here today, for giving yourself this gift, this gift of learning, this gift of connection, and this gift of growth. So as we start here today, I invite us to do a quick little spot check. And it is a spot check to tune in to how we feel right now. So I know you've all kind of set intentions, kind of word of the year, but I want you to kind of tune in and say, hmm, how am I feeling in this moment right now? And just give it a word. You can put it in the chat. You can write it on a piece of paper. But go ahead and label, what is your inner experience in this moment? Maybe you're excited. Maybe there's some anxiety going on uh, or some sadness about something. Maybe you're curious. Maybe, um, there we go, hopeful. Uh, there's some fear, right? There's kind of a feeling of kind of cloud um, uncertainty. So you can see a whole blending of emotions. And that's the gift of transition is really that blending of emotions. And you're going to learn about how to tap into the energy when you can accept all of those emotions and, and really shift and reset uh, to what you want to feel. So we're going to start right now with a technique. It is called the quick coherence technique. And it was developed by a research institution called the Institute of Heart Math. And this is uh, an organization that studies the communication between the heart and the brain. And when I say heart today, I don't mean that metaphorically. I mean the organ of your heart in the literal sense. And what they found out is that the state of optimal performance, optimal learning, optimal productivity, um, and of course, optimal health is that state of what we call coherence. So I'm about to teach you a very simple two-step process to get coherent or even more coherent if you were coherent to begin with so that you have a nice signal going from your heart up to your brain that allows your body to be in the kind of best, most synchronized state so that you can think the most clearly, make the best decisions and experience a lot of those words that you've all intended for the year, words like stability, peace, appreciation and love. And please don't allow the simplicity of this technique to fool you. There are over 450 published peer-reviewed research studies on the state of coherence and this tool. And if you want to check out that research uh, after the session, you're welcome to go to heartmath.org. So that's heart, like heart, math, like the subject, heartmath.org, and you will be able to see all of that research. So let's go ahead and now train you on this technique and then we'll actually get to do it together. But I want you to understand why you're doing it and why it could be beneficial for you uh, before we dive in. So the first step of this technique is to do what we call heart-focused breathing. So heart-focused breathing is where you focus your attention in the area of your heart. So it helps if it's safe, let's say if you're not driving, right, if it's safe and appropriate to actually place your hand over your heart or chest area. And then what you're going to do as you stay focused in your heart is that you're going to imagine, you're going to pretend as if your breath was flowing in and out of your heart area. 
And as you do that, you're gonna breathe slower and deeper than usual. So you're gonna get into a nice kind of smooth rhythm, imagining the breath flowing in and out of your heart. You can do this with your eyes opened or closed. We'll talk more about this later. This is a technique you can do during interviews as you're walking down the hall to a meeting uh, or joining a Zoom meeting, any time at all. So once you get into that nice rhythmic uh, pattern, of breathing in and out of your heart, you're going to activate a positive or renewing feeling. So you're gonna make a sincere attempt to experience a feeling of appreciation, let's say, or care or compassion for someone or something in your life. And what that's going to do is that once you're in that synchronized state, it's going to get some nice hormones into your body. Hormones like DHEA, which is a vitality hormone, and that offsets the cortisol, that stress that may be in your body. So this is a very healing technique, and it can really just take a minute or two to do. So let's go ahead and do that together now. I invite you to go ahead and focus your attention in the area of your heart. Imagine your breath is flowing in and out of your heart or chest area. Breathing a little slower and deeper than you normally do. Find an easy rhythm that's comfortable for you. And as you stay focused in your heart area, Make a sincere attempt to experience a regenerative positive feeling, such as appreciation or care for someone or something in your life. So you can try to re-experience the feeling of love that you have for someone, maybe even a pet, or focus on an accomplishment or a happy memory, or just breathe a feeling of calm and ease in and out of your heart. And we're going to do that for a few more seconds. Good. Now just begin to notice what, if anything, has shifted in the last minute or two. Notice how you feel. And of course, this is a technique that the more that you practice, the easier it is for the body to access that state of coherence, which will serve you really well. Because how you feel impacts how you think, and of course, your perceptions, your mindsets, and ultimately your actions and your results, whether it's in your career transition, any other life transition, and any other aspect of your life. So now let's shift our attention to the topic of lobsters. Lobsters, what do I mean by lobsters? So let me go ahead and regain, forgive me, I lost control of the screen for some reason of the slides. So bear with me for a moment. There we go. We see lobsters. Hooray. All right. So lobsters, everyone. All right. Now you're probably thinking, what in the world is she talking about? All right. So here's what I'm talking about. Let's talk about how do lobsters grow? Now, again, you might be wondering, I don't give a hoot about how lobsters grow, but I invite you to really care because here's why. So you may or may not know that lobsters are actually kind of a very soft, mushy kind of animal. And it lives inside of a very rigid shell, all right? So this is a shell that does not expand, all right? It just kind of stays in place. It's very rigid. So you might be wondering, how would a lobster grow inside of a shell that doesn't move? Well, here's how. So as the lobster continues to grow, as you can imagine, it begins to feel very confined inside this rigid shell, and it begins to feel this pressure and this discomfort. Yes, it's very, very uncomfortable. So what does the lobster do? Well, the lobster goes under a rock to kind of protect itself from predatory fish, and then it sheds the shell and produces a new one. 
Then it goes back out, does whatever lobsters do, grows, grows, grows. Again, oh, it's uncomfortable. I don't like it. I don't like it. And then again, it goes under the rock, sheds what it needs to shed, lets go of what it needs to let go, and produces a new beginning, produces a new shell. So why should you care? Because this is exactly what happens with all of us. You see the stimulus for the lobster to be able to grow is for it to feel uncomfortable. There is no growth without discomfort. I really want you to understand this. So discomfort is a gift when we know what to expect and how to uh, make ourselves feel better throughout the process. It is exactly the same for humans, only humans don't go under a rock. What do we do, right? We kind of numb ourselves in some way or we go right back to the way that things were if we can. And if not, we can really stay in that uh, miserable place. And so I want you to kind of get a very visceral feeling of what I'm talking about. Let's do a little exercise. I invite you to go ahead and just cross your arms in the usual way. All right, just go ahead and cross your arms. Very good. I don't know if you can see me. Cool. Now go ahead and uncross them and cross them the other way. And just begin to notice your inner experience. If you're like most people, you're probably feeling kind of like uncomfortable and it's weird and it's strange and you don't know what you're doing. Maybe you had to kind of like figure out what you're doing because you don't quite know how to do it and it took a while. And maybe you want to go back to the way things were. And that is exactly what happens during times of change. So in the lens of a career transition, when people feel that uncomfortable, I don't really know what I'm doing. It's a new foreign land. I don't have the programming for this. Some people go right back to uh, maybe the exact same job or the exact same thing that they did, which may not be the highest and best for them. The idea here is that we don't want to rush. We want to experience the transition. We'll talk more about how to do that in a moment. But maybe some of you may know people who've hopped from one job to the next or one relationship to the next, and they kind of found themselves in the same kind of pattern, the same kind of situation. And that's because they didn't give themselves the gift of transition. You see that need to stay comfortable, to stay in that automatic, habitual, conditioned way of being may actually inhibit your growth and your evolution, which is one of the beautiful things in this life. So just like the lobster, the stimulus for you to change and grow is that you feel uncomfortable. Yet many of us have this story that we tell ourselves about being uncomfortable, that it's kind of a bad thing because many of us have not been trained on tools like the quick coherence technique, right? How to shift and reset our state, ground us ourselves in those uncomfortable times. But here's the thing, we don't have to suffer. So yes, we get uncomfortable during a transition. That's a, a natural part of that. But we don't have to suffer. And here's why. Because suffering doesn't come from any event in our life or any experience or any person, right? The economy, the job, the thing. Suffering comes from the meaning that we give to those external experiences. It gives, it, it comes from the story, if you will, the narrative that we tell ourselves about it. And that narrative is directly related to our state. If we're in an incoherent state, experiencing some depleting emotion in that moment, if we haven't labeled it like you've done today, really accepted and shifted that, we're likely to find a not so positive meaning to the experience. And that's going to get our body all activated. And we're going to go down that down spiral that many of us have been to. So you really don't have to suffer because you are the storyteller. You are the storyteller. And oftentimes during transitions, when we don't know what to expect, as you're going to learn today, or we don't know how to reground ourselves, get coherent, we tend to assign kind of an over-significance to something, yeah? Like we give it a little too much meaning, yeah? We amplify the meaning and then our mind goes into this doom gloom kind of place. Many of those stories are not even true. Um, and yet they directly impact how we feel, how we behave, how we show up in interviews and in networking conversations, and ultimately, of course, our results. So let me tell you a quick story that's kind of gonna ground this for you a little bit more. It's a story about uh, this old farmer that had a beautiful horse and this horse helped him to kind of uh, take care of the, the land, the fields. But one day this beautiful horse ran away 
And so, you know, all the villagers came to see the old farmer and they said, Oi, this is such a bad thing. Your horse ran away, such bad fortune, bad luck. And this wise old farmer said, hmm, bad luck, good luck, who knows? Well, fast forward a couple of days, the horse comes back, but the horse comes back with a whole herd of horses. So now the wise old farmer has 10 horses to help him mend the fields. And right, everybody comes in the village to see him and they say, wow, this is the most amazing thing that could have happened. You're so lucky, such good fortune. And the farmer replies, good luck, bad luck, who knows? Fast forward a little bit more, the farmer's son was taming the horses and one day he happens to fall and break his leg. All the villagers come and they say, oh no, such misfortune. And of course, the wise old farmer, knowing that the story he tells himself is going to impact his results, says, bad luck, good luck, who knows? A couple of days later, the army comes into the village to draft soldiers. Of course, they skip the old farmer's son because of the injured leg. All the villagers say, what a blessing, you're so lucky. And of course, the story goes on and on. And this is the story of our life. The key is to manage our mindset, which starts by staying coherent so that we can access a state of inner peace, inner stability, no matter what is going on around us. And that inner ease is gonna help us to stay objective and to be able to create something that is even greater for ourselves because there always is a silver lining. So we wanna ask ourselves, what if, right? No matter what stuff is going on in your life, ask yourself, hey, what if, what if this thing that's happened is actually the beginning of something that is even greater for me, for my family, for my community, and so on. And I imagine that as you reflect back on your life, you could probably even notice some times where things seemed really dark and scary and uncertain, or you had a whole blending of emotions like many of you shared earlier today. And yet that experience led you to something that somehow was even greater, maybe to uh, better connections, maybe to uh, being more aligned in your life with things that are important to you. Maybe you got some learnings that you needed to learn. You maybe shed some things that you needed to shed. And I have an experience of this because I myself was laid off uh, years ago. I was working in consulting and IBM had merged with PricewaterhouseCoopers, which is where I was working at the time. And about 28 of us uh, in the department got laid off. And thankfully, we were paired with a career coach. And so through the experience with a career coach, I was able to really experience the transition to be with the emotions, to accept them, to grieve the loss. I had lost a feeling of you know, being important, right? The prestige, right? I work at this great company. I do these exciting things, right? That became part of my identity. And I needed to let that go. I really needed to feel that. And so once I did, and I kind of went through that ending, I was able to begin to create something new. I ended up going into marketing, which was wonderful and fun. And of course, the path was, you know, kind of weaved from there. But I want you to reflect on the fact that, hmm, what if? Ask yourself questions like that, and that'll help your mind imagine new possibilities for yourself. So even more learning objectives uh, in a moment, we're going to just touch a little bit on why career changes are necessary and why it's so important for you to really practice what you're learning today. Then we're going to quickly touch on what is the difference between a change and a transition, because most of us think it's the same thing. It's actually very different. Then we're going to train you on the three predictable phases of any transition, because this is where the empowerment comes in. It's like anything in life. If you know what to expect and you know how to deal with it, you're not a victim. You are empowered. And that's what today is about, is to help you feel even more empowered. And of course, we're going to quickly touch base uh, back on the quick coherence technique to make sure that you know how to use it, when to use it, uh, and so on. So let's go ahead and talk about why career transitions are necessary. So I imagine as you reflect back on your life and kind of how your career has transpired to date, um, 
I imagine that it probably wasn't a straight line like the top image there where you kind of set a plan for yourself, maybe when you got out of school and zoop, went down that path and stayed on that path until now. Chances are that it was a very, uh, you know, kind of winding road, so to speak, where there were some pitfalls and detours and things along the way, as, as I've experienced, as I shared. And those things are not bad. Again, when we utilize the transition to learn from them, to have more resources, right, in our backpack, so to speak, as we climb on in our career journey. And so the other thing that's important to keep in mind uh, as we consider how important it is to uh, learn these tools that we're learning today is looking at the future of work. Now, as we look back, at the last couple of years, right, with the pandemic and, you know, as Jessica said, right, you know, those couple of years, um, it really had a very profound effect on the workforce in our world, right? Things like, you know, the great resignation, right? lots of people working remotely and so on and so forth. And it also accelerated what we call the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0, which is essentially, you know, automation, AI, you know, the internet of things, robotics, cloud computing, and all those disruptive technologies. And those technologies are, as we know, right, dramatically impacting how we live, how we learn, and how we work. So the pandemic has accelerated right, our transition into Industry 4.0, but what it also did is it highlighted the need for you, for workers, to be better prepared to deal with future change. So by the year 2025, uh, the World Economic Forum estimates that 85 million people will be displaced. About one out of two are going to need reskilling, and for those that stay in the same job role, they're going to need to update about 40% of their skills. So as you can imagine, we must prepare ourselves not only, of course, to learn the technical skills uh, to manage kind of those new digital, uh, you know, jobs, but we also need to embrace a very positive mindset when it comes to change, because it's going to happen. And so we want to uh, be as empowered as we can be uh, by building our resilience capacity. But it is not all doom and gloom, because even though the World Economic Forum says that 85 million jobs or workers are going to be displaced, 97 million net new jobs are going to be formed. So you can see that there is going to be ample opportunity for all of us. So what does this mean for you? Like I said, what it means is the importance of really learning how to navigate transitions with ease. And it's so exciting. I know you're like super excited to learn this stuff because this is the essence of empowerment. So let's now focus on what is the difference between a change and a transition. So a change is something external. Yes, it's an external event. It's an external situation. It's some shift in the world around us. And change always has kind of two steps to it, if you will, right? Because we're going from point A to point B. Yeah, so from the current kind of old way of doing things to some new desired way. Yes. Now, the key is to um, consider that uh, the, although the external change is really kind of changing from one reality to the next, is that to really experience the benefits of the change, we need to go through a transition, some in-between stage. Now, that external change can be very painful. Some of you may have experienced it. Um, you know, it, it sometimes feels like something is like taken, right? Snatched from us, right? The rug is pulled under our feet. And sometimes it's a change that's welcomed, right? So whether it's a loss of a job or a new promotion or, um, you know, a new boss, or sometimes it's moving to a new house, new baby, right? Any of those things are kind of external changes, if you will. And people don't actually resist change. What they resist is transition. They resist transition. So what is transition? Transition is the inner process that we go through. It's that in between, between point A to point B. Yes, it's the psychological process that we go through during a change. And it's so, so, so important to um, allow ourselves to experience that transition because this is where we really internalize and come to terms with that new situation, that new reality that the change brought about. Sometimes transitions are reactive, right? So reacting to the change. But some of you may be like, well, there is no external change, Varied. Like nothing actually happened in my life. 
but I just want to create a change. I feel like I want to change my career in some way, new industry, new job, uh, aligning with my values some more, whatever it might be. That's what we call a developmental transition. So nothing actually happened in our external world, but we realize we kind of have a consciousness all of a sudden that we're not satisfied anymore in what it is that we're doing. And we begin to kind of wonder, hmm, like, what would it be like if I did this or if I did that? Right. And we start to imagine and we, you know, create new things. So I started my career as a civil engineer. Right. My path started like perhaps many of you, right, following in a parent's footsteps or things that we saw or heard. My father is a civil engineer and that felt like, you know, the easiest thing or the most familiar thing. Uh, but it wasn't the right fit. And so nothing actually happened in my job per se, but I just started to feel that kind of that little voice said, hmm, you know, Verit, maybe this isn't the right fit. You know, I wasn't quite happy and I needed to uh, really experience that in order to create something that was even more aligned. So now that we understand the difference between change and transition, let's shift our focus to the three predictable phases of any transition, because this is really important that you get this. There are three overlapping phases in each transition, no matter whether it's a career transition or any other transition. And all transitions always start with an ending. You might be thinking an ending, right? It's a start, it's a transition. Mm -mm. All transitions always start with an ending. We cannot embrace something new until we experience the loss and consciously choose to let go of the old. This is really important. We can't let go of the old and move towards something new without an ending. And that always involves loss. And we'll talk more about how to do that in a moment. Once we've done that, then we enter the neutral zone, this kind of <gasps> scary tornado-like you know, zone where we're really not in the old or in the new. Yes, it's that in-between state. And this is the most creative kind of pure energy state because you're not attached to the old or the new yet. So what that means is that you can create it the way that you want it. And so again, resilience, practicing that quick coherence technique or other tools that you have for resilience are so important in that in-between neutral zone so that you could really leverage the opportunity for your growth once we've done that, then we enter a new beginning, a fresh new beginning. And that's, of course, exciting. It's also there's still uncertainty and all those things. But of course, there is an acceptance and a commitment that comes with that. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more now about the ending, because this is something that most people miss when it comes to career transitions. So like I said, all transitions require us to grieve what we're leaving behind, even when it's a change that we welcome, like a good change, right? Like let's say we're choosing to go to another job or we're choosing to remodel our house, right? And we have the resources to do that. Whatever the change might be, we're still having to say goodbye to the old. Can you see that? We can't go from something, you know, from the past to the future without saying goodbye to something that will no longer be. And that's a physiological change. It's not a head thing. It's a body thing. And so in order to do that, we've got to be conscious of what we're losing. So we want to ask ourselves these questions. What actually is changing? Like what will actually be different? Oftentimes in stress, like I said, when we're incoherent, we tend to amplify and it's the end of the world. But what actually will be changing? You'll probably realize that less than you think. And what am I going to lose? Jessica, did you have a question there? I thought I said, okay. So what am I going to lose? And that's a really important question. What do I need to let go of? So in the lens of career transition, these are some of the things that people typically lose when they leave one job, right? At least temporarily until they start whatever it is that they're moving toward. So they might lose a regular income, a, a sense of belonging or community, maybe a regular place to go to, whether it's, you know, physically or virtually, maybe a way to utilize those wonderful gifts and talents that we have or to feel appreciated, rewarded, you know, to get feedback. Maybe we had plans for the future for our family that are no longer uh, going to stay the same. Maybe it's that question that we're asked right often in networking events, like, what do you do or where do you do it? Right. That may need to shift. And then the big whopper here. 
is identity. That's why I said it's a body thing. So, you know, again, when I left my consulting role, I left a, a feeling of being important of, of, you know, that stood for something for me. And it meant that I was smart and it meant all these things. And so I experienced shame and loss and embarrassment. And when I worked at Lee Hecht Harrison, which is an outplacement firm for three and a half years, I often heard people say, well, you know, I feel like I'm losing myself. Like, I don't even know who I am without my job, without my title, you know, without that community. So when you let go of your old identity, right, your old assumptions, that old programming, those uh, oftentimes maladaptive beliefs about who you are, what you should or shouldn't do, those old attachments, then you can begin to enter into the neutral zone and create who you want to be. So this is where um, a lot of people resist this, and this is why I invite you to really take the time to be in the ending. People resist saying goodbye um, to the old world because it is like you know saying goodbye to something that's safe and familiar. And so we want to practice the quick coherence technique to be able to allow ourselves to find ease. Another trick is as you're uh, kind of journaling on all the things that uh, you will be losing or that you have lost um, or talking about it to a friend or to a coach, I invite you to consider also self-soothing with a technique called havening. Havening is a psychosensory modality. If you check out my podcast, The Mindset Game, you'll see some episodes about havening because I'm a havening practitioner. Um, and havening is where we use gentle touch, gentle touch to soothe ourselves. So one of the ways to do that is to give ourselves a, a moving hug like I am doing, where you take the palms of your hands from the shoulders down to the elbows, lift your hands up and do that again. So I invite you all to do this with me right now. So what you're doing as you give yourself a moving hug is that you are sending these nice delta electric signals up to your brain, to the amygdala, which is very soothing. So as you're focused on what you're losing or the sadness of that or the grief of that, that's allowing your body to self-regulate um, and allowing you to experience more ease. Okay, so that's a little trick as well that you can use. But a lot of people um, uh, kind of um, resist grieving because either they believe that they can somehow hold on to the past if they don't grieve, or they like, you know, think I need to be positive. I need to stay in that high vibration. But that's not true. We have to grieve. We have to be with those feelings. And we can soothe ourselves as we do that and work through them. So if we subscribe, suppress the grief, if we hide it, if we don't talk about it, if we don't allow ourselves to feel it, we carry that energy. We literally like take that energy with us and we're going to plop it onto the next job, just like other programs. We've got to release it. This is also for your health. 60 to 80 uh, percent of primary care physician visits are stress related. So in order to prevent any health stuff, you want to make sure to practice the quick coherence technique, practice havening, and allow yourselves to experience the loss. And you can also ask yourself, what will stay the same? Because continuities are really important stabilizers during you know, the, the turbulence of a transition. So you can journal, hey, what's going to stay the same? What will stay the same? Hey, I'm taking my skills and abilities with me, right? Nobody's robbing that one from me. My past accomplishments, my support networks, my health, my habits, right? All of that is coming with you. And that, of course, can be very soothing for the unconscious mind during change. So the typical emotions of endings are denial, right? Or shock, if it's something that we're not expecting, we're confused, we get angry, we blame, we get defensive, we're frustrated, we're irritated. Uh, and of course, that doesn't help, uh, because it doesn't fill the hole inside of us. And so we dip into sadness, um, despair, disappointment, and sometimes full blown depression, but we don't have to go there, we can practice the quick coherence technique three times a day, get our body into a higher vibration, and we will not dip to that level. You are empowered here. The neutral zone, that no man's land that I talked about, it's the in-between, you know, and this is um, where all of the kind of realignments take place. This is where you get to shed some old conditioning. You get to uh, prepare yourself to have more resources in the next step of the transition. So this is where you want to ask yourself questions. Like, what is most important to me in my career? 
what's important to me in the context of my career, prioritize that and find ways to align with that creative ways. You can have informational interviews, talk to people, uh, see opportunities for yourself, um, whether it's staying in the same role or others, but give yourself an opportunity to position yourself for something that's even greater to come. And the resistance that people have in that phase of the transition is typically that they, you know, the body resists chaos and confusion because we we don't quite know where we're headed yet. It's like, you know, we're not attached to the older than you. It's like being in a raging river. Yes. So we're not like holding on to either end or like in a pool, right? For somebody who doesn't know how to swim. Right. But the idea here is that the quick coherence technique is like, uh, a, you know, a, a saving device, if you will, a life saving device or a an ability to swim through the neutral zone to stay coherent. And when you know to expect the neutral zone, it's not quite as chaotic and confusing, confusing because you know that it's typical and normal and appropriate to experience that during the transition. So typical to experience fear, anxiety, right? There's uncertainty. So, you know, the body's going to feel some anxiety, confusion, but there's also, right, especially when we get coherent, creativity, innovation. It's like a pure feeling of energy that you can utilize and leverage to create something that's newer. So as you see these words on the screen, I invite you to consider, you know, what am I feeling right now? Where, where am I in this transition, right? Maybe you're not quite even in the ending yet. You're just kind of thinking about a career transition. So you're in the beginning stages. Maybe you're in the full-blown grief. Maybe you're in the neutral zone. Um, or maybe you're in the new beginning. And so what is the new beginning? The new beginning is that phase where you get to now focus your energies. So you've shed a lot of stuff. You have new understandings, new values, new attitudes, new identity. And right, it's kind of like now, right, that unfamiliar thing is starting to feel more familiar. And the more that you repeat that, the more that you really embody that. It becomes this new program, becomes the new familiar, comfortable, safe reality. And then you begin to um, experience even more excitement about it. But yet there's resistance in the new beginning as well, right? Because there are still uncertainties and there's still some risk, right? Because sometimes you're starting uh, or stepping into something that's brand new, right? And you don't exactly know how it's going to play out. Or maybe you're like staking a lot into something that's kind of untried, if, if you will. So all of that is normal and typical. And when you expect it, you can do the work to self-regulate, to stay coherent and ask yourself questions like, hmm, how do I want to feel, right, as I move toward this next thing? In the new beginning, you can also visualize, you know, how you want to be in the new role or the new industry or wherever it is that you're kind of moving to, right? You can even create a mind movie for yourself. Um, you know, um, there is, um, you know, something called an infinity mind movie um, that you can make for yourself or access. And what that allows you to do is to actually see your future and to really embody those emotions, which will help to reprogram those old mindsets. So what are the common emotions? Certainly relief, right? Because you're not in the neutral zone anymore, right? That's usually an indication that you, you're in a new beginning. There's still some uncertainty and confusion, but it's also like, hmm, like a, an adventure, right? It's an exploration. And there's a commitment, of course, at the end of that. So the important thing here for you to get is that if you don't give yourself permission to feel the feelings, to accept the feelings, and to regulate those feelings, you will not actually experience a transition. You might hop from one thing to the next. And here's what happens. This is what I see over and over in my work is that people end up exactly where they started. New team, new company, new title, new whatever, but the same old pattern. And some of you may have already experienced this in your life, right? In some area of your life, right? Or even in, in the context of relationships. Do you know people that, you know, separated from somebody and then they get into a new relationship, which is kind of the same as the old? That's because they haven't really gotten those lessons, those juicy good lessons that come from experiencing the transition. And so it's really important throughout the day as you go through this transition to label and accept how you feel. And I invite you to do this three, four times a day. You actually just pause and label, just like we did at the beginning. Hmm, how am I feeling right now in this moment? Because when you know that, then 
You can kind of get a sense of where you are in the transition process, but also you have self-awareness and you have choice because if you're in a depleted state, guess what you're going to do? The quick coherence technique, right? You're going to focus your attention in the area of your heart and activate some positive feeling. And then you're going to get to be more coherent, more objective. You're going to think differently. You're going to uh, create a different perception or meaning to the stuff that's going on in your life. And you'll be able to create new solutions. And to help you to label your emotions, there are lots of apps to be able to do that. One of my favorites is called the Mood Meter, M-O-O-D Meter, so M-E-T-E-R. The Mood Meter, it was created by the head of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence, super simple app. It does cost 99 cents, but a well worth investment uh, when you use it every day. And it'll allow you to just kind of pause and say, all right, where am I? Right? Am I on the left side of the grid in some unpleasant emotion or on the right side in a more pleasant emotion? Is it a high energy kind of feeling, you know, where my heart rate is up and I'm kind of activated? Uh, or is it a low energy feeling, kind of a little more passive? And when you label that, you'll also get to choose in the mood meter, you know, do I want to stay or do I want to shift? And of course, you've got now two tools to help you to shift the quick coherence and havening. So um, let's now uh, kind of revisit that quick coherence technique, because it's really important that you know exactly how, when, where, and so on to do this so that you can really utilize it and experience even more ease in your transitions. And this is, uh, of course, going to reduce the stress that you feel, but it also will build your resilience capacity. So as you move through life, as we talked about, there may be more transitions down the line, right? That resilience capacity is going to help you to experience even more ease in the next transition so that the stories you tell yourself are going to be even more coherent, kind of like the farmer, and you'll be able to get through the transition even more quickly and easily. So the reason we want to do this, again, if we hold on to that stress, right? So if I'm feeling fear or anxiety or uncertainty, worry, right? Sadness, uh, guilt, shame, whatever it might be that I'm feeling, and I'm not labeling that, I'm not, uh, you know, accepting that um, or releasing it through the quick coherence technique, then I'm going to hold on to it in my body. And that can lead me to feel completely depleted, exhausted. I might not want to do all the things I need to do in a career transition, resume stuff, networking, interview stuff, you know, application stuff, right? We just might not have the energy to do that. So you got to manage your energy. That's first and foremost, right? We also uh, want to prevent errors. We want to make sure our performance is nice and high when we're in those important conversations. And of course, take good care of our health. So that quick coherence technique, um, again, what it does is it uh, creates a very balanced state in the body. And what it does, it sends some nice uh, neurochemicals into your body that make your body feel good. But what it also does is it changes the heart rate variability pattern that travels up the vagal nerve from your heart up to the thalamus in your brain that controls all those executive functions. And it creates a nice smooth pattern. And what that does is it creates a whole brain state where your right hemisphere is talking to your left hemisphere and the whole body is in a state of harmony. So the um, Institute of HeartMath, again, defines coherence as that state of optimal performance and optimal health, which is what we want to be at during a career transition, and for that matter, at any point in our life. So physiologically, it's where all the systems in your body, your immune system, your nervous systems, your hormonal system, cardiovascular, digestive system, all of them are working together like a beautiful symphony, yes, coherently. So imagine a rowing team, a high performing rowing team. Yes, you got somebody who's on that boat leading it going stroke, stroke, stroke. And what's everybody doing? At the same time, they're dipping their oars in the water, right? They're doing it at the same pace, yes? And that is exactly what that state of coherence is. When you do those two steps that we started with today, that's what's going to happen in your body. Everything is going to start working together rather than against one another. And you'll be able to be more objective, to have a more open growth mindset, and to be able to see uh, the silver lining, if you will. So when do you want to use this technique? Truthfully, anytime, but let's be even more specific. So you can do it as soon as you wake up in the morning to prepare for the day, whether it's expecting to have a stressful situation or just building your resilience capacity for the day. 
You can do it uh, at night also before you fall asleep. You'll sleep better. And in addition to that, you'll kind of kick off the next day uh, in an even more empowered state. Um, and you want to use it any time throughout the day that you're feeling either triggered by something or someone, or you have some old thought or whatever it might be. You want to label the feeling, always label the feeling, accept it, and then choose to shift and reset it. And we have to do that physiologically, which means that we need to do some heart-focused breathing. We can't just do this in our head. We got to work with the body because it's the body that holds the energy. Yes, we can't do this just by thought alone. So we got to focus our attention in the area of our heart, imagining our breath flowing in and out of the heart, breathing slower and deeper than usual, then activating a more positive or renewing feeling by making a sincere attempt to experience a regenerative feeling, such as appreciation or care for something or someone in your life. This is in your handout. For those of you that have not yet downloaded it, um, you will see it in the follow-up email. I'll even send you a video uh, guiding you through this um, and more resources if you'd like. The idea here, what's most important, is that this is something that you can choose to do anytime, anywhere. Like I said, you can be in an interview, in a networking conversations, at the dinner table, you could be driving. This is not meditation. It's perfectly safe to do it anytime, anywhere. Nobody knows that you're doing this. And what's going to happen is that you're going to have a nice signal, not only helping you to feel better, but you're going to radiate a higher signal out into this field around your body. And those individuals that are interviewing you or that you're networking with will be able to feel that energy and they will trust you more. They will feel more comfortable with you and they're more likely to hire you because it's all energetic. And so uh, what emotions do you want to experience? Any positive emotion will work. Um, really, whether you're re-experiencing a joyful moment, imagining being right back there, seeing what you saw, hearing what you heard, feeling that feeling, confidence, gratitude, it really doesn't matter. All you want to do is to label your emotions and then do some heart-focused breathing and activate some positive feeling. Because here's the thing, the stimulus for your growth is that discomfort right? You are just like our friend, the lobster, right? Discomfort is a good thing. So the next time you feel some version of discomfort, consider it as an invitation from the universe to change. It's an indication that you are ready for something bigger. So ask yourself, what is it time for me to let go of? What is it time for me to let go of? And expect to go through the three predictable phases of transition, to grieve the loss, to experience the chaos and excitement of the neutral zone, and step into the new beginning. So be super kind with yourself throughout the process. Very compassionate, always doing your best. And this is not a magic pill. You do need to do this multiple times a day because it's a chemical state in the body. So pause three, four times a day, label your emotions and practice the quick coherence technique, even when you're feeling great. And what you'll notice is that as you do all the other stuff that you typically do during a career transition, you will be more productive. You will have better conversations. You will make uh, better decisions. You'll feel more confident in those interviews or whatever it is that you're doing and you'll get better results. But most importantly, you'll experience that ease and joy that you deserve to feel at any time and that you can feel any time when you practice what you've learned today. So that completes our presentation. Uh, if you want to learn even more about mindset, how to shift unconscious programs in the letting go process, um, there is a free video course that you have access to um, as part of this program. And uh, it'll be in the handout. You can look at that QR code or go to that website. It's also in um, my website, which is MomentumInstitute.com. Find me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to support you. Um, find me in the breakout room and you know, ask any questions that you may have. We can even do a little spot coaching. And of course, check out and subscribe to The Mindset. Lots of expert interviews and things that will really, really help you. And so thank you for this opportunity. And Jessica, I bring it back to you. Oh, Varid, thank you so much. Can we do the like virtual clap? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we're so grateful for having you here today, Barrett. Um, I saw a lot of conversation happening throughout the chat. I would love to hear um, all of you um, just to 
drop in one nugget you got out of today. Um, one thing you learned out of Vared's talk, um, uh, there was a moment that I got a little emotional, if I'm honest, because I had set this up um around your word of the year and of course mine is forgiveness and then for you to be talking about something to let go of I'm like oh my gosh <laughs> so um thank you yes thank you for dropping it's time to let go be the lobster and shed that uncomfortable shell be kind to yourself understanding the difference in change and transition um lots of good stuff here um the importance of grieving and what we are leaving behind Many of you are in change in this moment, and that could be a change you chose or a change that was bestowed upon you. And I hope that you will take what Vera taught us here and um, understanding that change can um, be something beneficial to all of us and or to, to you and uh, what you're going through. So um, we will have this available for you after the event, you will get an email after today uh, with a link back to the webinar. And so if you would like to go back through and uh, actively participate again in some of these activities she walked you through, um, but I highly encourage you to connect with her directly and um, listen to that podcast. So Varen, thank you again. We really appreciate you to be here today. She is available to chat and she will be in the breakout rooms also um, in a little bit. Thank you, Jessica. All my love to all of you. Awesome. All right. We are going to move on to our next uh, speaker. And uh, Tamala Macbeth is the Chief Executive Officer of Dress for Success Phoenix. And she is responsible for guiding the organization's mission of empowering women to achieve financial independence through education, support, and viable employment. And before joining for Dress for Success, she had an accomplished national career in healthcare operations and business consulting, including endeavors building two successful businesses from the ground up as president and CEO of both Pearl Consulting Group and the Regal Group. And since joining Dress for Success in 2021, uh, Tamala has become a fixture in the community. She has volunteered her time to serve on both the City of Phoenix Human Services Commission and its Community Development Review Committee. She's also been profiled by numerous major local media outlets, such as the Phoenix Business Journal, Fox 10, and ABC 15. And most recently, she was recognized as a member of the prestigious Great 48 by Phoenix Magazine. She graduated from Christopher Newport University with a bachelor's science degree in social work and is currently completing her executive master's degree at ASU. Uh, she's also a member of the 2022 cohort of ASU's Knowledge Exchange for Resilience Fellow Program. We, I am just honored to have uh, Tamala here. So welcome, please, Tamala Bigbeth. Thank you, Jessica. And just to say the honor is all mine and um, just what an amazing program. And, you know, it's so good, Vera, the points that you made and everything you shared. I don't even want to talk now. I don't know about the rest of you. I just want to go somewhere and just sort of be quiet and think about all of it, but definitely um, can relate um, to the um, transition and change and all that that means. And I know so many of us on this um, seminar today have experienced that and will experience it going forward. So I just want you to know uh, I'm just totally blown away and uh, it resonates in so many ways and looking forward to how we can work together in the future because that's what we do to help each other, right? That's exactly what we should do. So everybody, thanks so much for having me. That um, bio, I have no idea who wrote that, but you know, she sounds great, but I don't know her. And um, I am just, um, just me, happy to be here. And I uh, want to just talk a little bit about resources. So I'm shifting gears just a little bit from um, Vera's presentation, um, but just on some practical resources. And I just want to tell you a little bit about um, Dress for Success and who we are and uh, maybe how we can be a resource to some of you on this call. Um, let me see if I can get the get this to work. I can see it, but it hasn't started yet. So let's see. Now it's moving a lot. Okay, good. <laughs> it's working. All right, great. So just for success, Phoenix, we 
um, are a nonprofit organization and we serve primarily unemployed and underemployed uh, women in the, um, in the valley there. But um, our mission is really around empowering women to achieve economic you know, independence. And we do that in several ways. And, and often the way that most people identify with Dress for Success is through um, our professional attire. And um, that's usually how people, um, that's their entree a lot of times to Dress for Success. But we do so much more around career uh, training and career readiness. And um, we also do that for men as well too. So just a little tidbit and I'll talk about that a little bit more um, as we go through. But let me just tell you about um, Dress uh, globally. Dress for Success is actually a global organization. We, we are, uh, Phoenix is one of 150 chapters and we're located in 20 con 25 countries. And um, over the course of the 25 years that Dress has been in existence, we've served over 1.2 million women. And we do this through countless volunteers. So some of you who are on from other um, cities uh, may also be able to tap into your uh, Dress for Success affiliate there where you live. Then we talked a little bit, you know, as um, Barrett was talking about change and, and some of some things that happened to us that we are not, um, that happened to us. They're not a change that we have implemented. And um, we just look at the long-term impacts of the pandemic on women, one of the things that we study and you know it's hard to imagine, but in 2020 alone, uh, women lost about $800 billion in income. And that is the combined GDP of 98 countries when you think about it. So we have a lot of work to do, you know, in the, as employers that are on um, this call, uh, corporations that are on and looking at that to be able to regain, um, uh, ground that we lost. You know, over three years, we lost, women lost about um, 30 years of progress in three years time in the workforce. So we definitely have a lot of work to do and we want to continue that. And so we do have less <clears throat> paying jobs, uh, well-paid jobs for women right now globally. So, you know, the onus is on us and on the corporations to make sure that we regain that that traction as soon as possible. Now our local impact for those of you that are in the Valley, um, we serve, we've served over 20,000 women um, there in the Valley. We also serve teens. We have a teen workforce initiative where we serve uh, both boys and girls in that program, college students as well. And uh, one of the things that we really are proud about is we have a professional women's group. Uh, we call it PWG. And what it is, is a lifetime retention program. So that's for employed women to be a part of and um, to continue to grow, to help with um, negotiation, with salaries, with uh, self-care, um, with financial literacy. And we offer all of those things uh, within the organization, you know, free of charge if, if um, those are area, that's an area that you need. Um, one thing that we think is great that 97% of the women in our, in our PWG have been employed and remain employed um, over the past year. They all have um, the 98% with checking and savings accounts. And I know that probably sounds funny to some of you, but so many of our women that, that come into our, um, our program um, might have uh, been victims of domestic violence. They might be reentry. Um, candidates. Um, also, there are just so many different things, even displacement from COVID and layoffs and that sort of thing. So financial literacy is something we really try to support our women in when they come in. We also push for women to receive salary increases as quickly as possible and give them the tools to be able to do that. And we also stress home ownership. So we have um, several different programs um, starting with um, styling, we talked about that a little bit, professional attire. Uh, we have a career center, our um, career uh, center managers on this call, Cynthia Leva, she works with um, um, our clients when they come in about what they need to develop around resumes and cover letters and one-on-one um, -on -one interview um, um, 
um, role playing, which is just so needed a lot of times, especially if you've been out of the job market and you haven't been interviewing just to get that feel prior to going into an actual interview. Uh, we have a fast track program for those who find themselves, you know, with an interview right away and need to work on those skills quickly so that we can provide those resources. I did talk a little bit about our professional women's group. We also have a mobile career center. So if you're in a city in an area, we can come to where you are <clears throat> in the valley. We are throughout the valley, um, actually now going up into um, Flagstaff as well and um, Tucson. So we do have services that we can bring to you. So for corporations that are on that need that service or need that support or hiring events or anything like that, you know, please reach out to us. We would love to be a resource uh, with you in the community and in your community. And our Teen Workforce um, Initiative, once again, we work with teens from 16 and we work up to 24 because we have so many uh, college students that are also coming out um, doing um, internships or applying for their first jobs that need that career um, support and skills. So that's another area. One thing that we just launched that some of the women and some of the men who may have uh, someone in your life that would benefit from this, but Dress for Success Phoenix was chosen as the central agency for the Pathways program and that we are able to offer scholarships to single moms and which is a game changer for some women, especially when you're going back into the, the workforce or you're ready to make that next level and you need a certification or um, you need a certain degree in an area. So we are really excited about that and what it means. And so we've partnered with Maricopa uh, Community Colleges and also we're working uh, with ASU uh, as well for this program. So just launched that in August and we're really excited about it. And we have, um, probably about 40 women in the cohort now. We have over 100 women that are on our waiting list. So if it's something that you're interested in, um, I think that um, Jessica is putting it in the chat so you can reach out to us and we can talk about it more in the, um, the chat room as well. Hey, Tim, so let me ask you a question real quick sure. before you continue. I wanted sure. to, we have people from all over the United States yes. on this call. It's not um, just Arizona. So um, we, I put in the chat how to find your local chapter, but I, one of the things I really wanted you to spend a moment on today was kind of, um, talking about that whole image thing that you guys yes. do so well. So mm -hmm. do you have maybe a couple tips on, you know, image yes. and what, you know, how we can represent ourselves as men and women going out and like some people on the call haven't interviewed for 20 years. And so you have any thoughts exactly. on that? Exactly. Yes. And want to talk about that and just know that some of those programs to the pathways programs are in different cities if you if you are in one that would have one it's a federal uh, program but you know definitely Jessica when it comes to how do we put it all together um, and how do we display exec what I call executive presence and yes it starts with professional um, attire industry industry specific attire. I find a lot of times now for some of you on the call post COVID, just not sure how you should show up or is it is it all gonna be casual or um, exactly um, what you should do. And I think it's important that you do the research um, on the company that you are interviewing with. Make sure you know that because a lot of times we will, um, I find that, that employees or potential employees, candidates, will assume <clears throat> that most corporations are like a Google or a Microsoft. And truly, oftentimes that first layer, they're not. So you definitely want to make sure that you go in with an executive presence, with a, a complete look, that you understand what their culture is like. Because the interview process is different than being an employee. You know, a lot. that's where you're going to make your first impression. And, and most of you know that. So for those of you who are going back into the workforce or not sure about it exactly, I would say err on the side of conservative and make sure that you have that piece um, buttoned up because there's still a lot of scrutiny uh, going into interviews that we see that people um, are not, cannot show up as I am or just be me. And um, I know that that's something we hear a lot, but it, um, I would just caution you 
to think about that from your professional attire perspective. I think polished resumes and cover letters, you know, we um, are a little more lax now because so much is emailed as opposed to going in with hard copies and that sort of thing. But take the time to work on that and take the time to look at your resume to see that it really represents you and all of your skills and your giftings. Sometimes a functional resume for some jobs is even better when it comes to um, presenting yourself because this is a part of your brand. And I think this is what we really have to uh, work to do to make sure that we see that as a part of our brand. So when we talk about strong interview skills, if you haven't interviewed in a while, um, video yourself. Um, video your, because a lot of times, you know, you may have a quirk, you may have something that you, a word that you say over and over. You, you wanna know what my word is over and over, um, guys? My word is amazing. If you talk to me for more than 15 minutes, you're gonna hear me say amazing at least five or six times why my brain just goes to that word. It's a good word. But if you find that you have certain things like that, that you continue over and over, that may be off-putting or um, uh, may be uh, subject to scrutiny, just practice on that. So interview, uh, uh, video yourself or sit with someone else that will give you feedback. That's one of the things that we do a lot of is, and that's one-on-one -on -one coaching so that we can get feedback from someone that we trust on our interview skills. Practice listening. A lot of times we go into interviews and we talk and nerves will cause us to do that, right guys? You know, if we don't know the techniques that Vera just talked about how to center and ground ourselves and breathe, and soothe ourselves before we get there, what we, know, what we most likely will do is talk. And yes, we need to talk about ourselves, but we also need to listen and listen well on the question. So that's something that I think we practiced prior to um, as well. Another uh, big part of, of um, managing your brand is around your social media presence. We all have one, right? But there's a difference between a um, personal, social media presence and a professional one. I don't know one employer, and I know there's some here on this call and drop something in the chat. If you look at this, if you're a corporation and you look at the um, social media accounts of your candidates, I bet we have a few. So a lot of times just know, go in knowing that you wanna be congruent with the messaging that you're putting out there when you go in, whether it's LinkedIn um, or your Instagram or whatever you use, you wanna make sure that there's congruency with that. So I think in those areas, Jessica, when we look at some of the practical skills, it's not even rocket science, guys. It really isn't. It's doing your research, knowing where you're going, knowing who you're talking to when you get there and being able to exude that executive presence even before you get the job. So often we've got to do that before we get a position because this might be our one shot that we have you know, to, um, to advance or to go to the next level. So hopefully some of those areas will help with that. Any of you, as um, uh, Jessica was saying earlier, if you're in the Valley and you have questions about that, let us know. One of the things we are um, just really excited about is um, our Tailor Made for Success, which is for men, because a lot of times men will have the same questions and the same concerns. But most importantly, feel confident in yourself. And as you're putting that together, when you work on your brand, when you leave your home or when you go into um, that place, when you're walking down the, the hallway and you're centering yourself, Number one thing is to be confident in what you're taking and what you bring to the party. Any questions around that? That is awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Bree, or if you wanna go to the last slide and just mention your Pathways program. Absolutely. What I have on the um, last slide too is about our general information. So any of you, the QR codes there, um, it'll take you to our website. You can get more information about what we do and how we do it uh, for corporations. If there's something that we can assist you with, with um, current employees or with um, new employees and new candidates, 
uh, please let us know. But we definitely um, are just excited about being a partner um, with you, Jessica. We're excited about um, all of the people on this call and wishing all of you uh, very well and great success. Two of my, I would say to some of you that I've seen your um, ch in the chat that you have been laid off or you're looking, you're going to be laid off soon. And I will tell you that two of the best opportunities of my life came after being laid off. So it's not the end, it's a beginning, just as Vered was saying earlier, see it as a beginning. There, there's just so much out there for you. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. We hear uh, stories like that so often. And when we're in the middle of a layoff, it is hard to see anything in front of us. And um, so have encouragement that a, a, a large, there are quite a number of people on here that have been through a layoff. I remember when I got laid off and I, um, at the time I was at Intel, great company. And this was about 15 years ago now, but I had been there 10 years and uh, basically had been all my corporate life. And I remember stepping out the first day and being like, I don't even know what to do. This is all I've known. I don't even know how to speak language outside of the acronyms that we talk about. And so if you're in that kind of fuzzy place, I am telling you, there is a world out there for you to see and find. And so thank you again, Barrett and Tamala. We really appreciate having you here today. All right, so we're gonna go through some resources and closing and I'm gonna, um, and then we're gonna move into our breakout rooms. So if you have any additional feedback outside of what's been in the chat, feel free to shoot us an email and we read those and um, Joey on our team gets those emails and uh, we make sure that um, you get a response. And so feel free to email us anytime. Uh, we also have a couple different opportunities for you. Uh, the webinar, we, we've seen this question asked a lot of times, Am I? do I have access to this information? This webinar will be posted on our website um, under the resources, uh, under the, um, it's under like the events section, uh, but that's the direct link. You will also get an email following this event today with the information of, um, you know, who our speakers were, and there will be a link back to the webinar. So we don't send out the presentation for uh, privacy reasons, uh, but we do send you a link to the webinar. Also, if you've never taken the DISC assessment, we have a partner, Top Talent Consulting, that provides that at no cost for you. And it allows you to see your communication style, your ideal work environment. And again, totally free for you. So you can uh, grab that um, in the, Joey's dropping it in the chat, or you can just go out to our website. And of course we are on social media. So we love that you guys are connecting with us on social media. Um, we also wanna thank our corporate partners um, for helping us make this program happen. And um, so thank you guys so much. I do want to specifically mention one of our partners, and they're on the call today as well, Best Companies AZ. Uh, I think Denise Gredler is on the call for sure. Uh, Carrie Trimble might be here as well. They will be available in the breakout room as well. But what they do is work with best companies that have in-person and remote positions, and they were they award best places to work and then they work with them to help showcase their brand and connect with their employers and so here are some of their some of their clients their award winners their fortune 100 winners their diversity and equity winners uh top places to work across the nation and in arizona we are we are based in arizona that's why you hear some arizona stuff coming out here and there um and then there are some of the clients that are actively hiring right now and so thank you, Denise. Thank you for being part of this. Denise actually co-founded Career Connectors with me uh, almost 14 years ago now. So it's been a pleasure. And if any of you were reading the chat, she kind of dropped in a little bit of her story, but we wouldn't know each other if we both wouldn't have been laid off. And this program would not have happened. So you and none of us would be here today. So thank you, Denise. I love you and appreciate you. All right. So we do have some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, on Thursday, January 26th, we have an, a technology and cybersecurity hiring and training expo. So we have companies like Freeport, McMoran, Kubra, eBacon. E We're working on all of the companies and they will be posted on our website. We'll have between 15 and 20 companies that are hiring technology talent there at that event. And it is virtual. 
And so anyone uh, anywhere can attend this event and uh, a large portion of those jobs are remote jobs. And so I hope you uh, join us for that event. You will actually be talking with directly with employers. And so the Career Connectors program does uh, at least one event a month that has this format where there's content and coaching. And then we do at least one event a month that is really a hiring event, what brings in employers, you can talk directly to employers. And then Thursday, February 9th, another phenomenal speaker, uh, Bridget McGowan is going to be here. See me, hear me, love me, hire me. And so you will, uh, you will love hearing from her. And uh, if you're still in the career transition or kind of thinking about what to do next, come on February 9th, that's a virtual event. And then if you are in the Phoenix area, Arizona, we are doing an in-person career expo for uh, architecture, construction in the trades industry. And so we have some great companies. We'll have up to 30 companies at that event. So we look forward to seeing you there. So all of those events can, you can get on our website. We also are on a grant right now called AZ Careers Now. So if you see that branding out there, we are in a partnership with the Greater Phoenix Chamber Foundation. So we're doing a lot of hiring events through that program as well. Thank you so much to our volunteers today. Um, and you will see a lot of them, um, they've been popping on for the last half hour. And um, we have lady, uh, ladies here from the Resume Writers Council of Arizona. We have coaches, uh, LinkedIn coaches, resume, um, career coaches, and uh, great support. So I highly encourage you to take advantage of this time and make sure that you can go meet with some of them. If you are interested in volunteering, uh, we do have a link on our website, careerconnectors.org backslash volunteer, and we would love to um, work with you to um, help uh, us in all the different capacities we need. And then, of course, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. So once you land your next great career, if you think about us during Arizona Gives Day or Giving Tuesday, we are a 501c3 nonprofit and would love your support. So thank you so much. And I just want to say it's been such a pleasure to kick this event, have all of you here, Thank you for connecting with me on LinkedIn. I would love to continue that. If you didn't connect with people on LinkedIn, I encourage you to go through and click on some of these people and connect and make sure you network. Stay for the breakout session. Bree's going to walk us through that right now, and then you can connect directly with people. Um, thank you again. We are praying for your landing into the career of your dreams. Have a great week. All right, um, I'm just going to go over how to get into a breakout room. So um, in just a few seconds, I'm going to open the breakout rooms. Um, once I open all of the rooms um, to get into a room, you're going to go to your toolbar. So that might be at the top or the bottom of your screen. Hover, open the breakout room section. You'll see a list of all of them. There's about nine. Um, and you're going to hover over which one you want to join. And to the right, you'll see a blue button that says join. Um, and from there, it'll take you into that breakout room. If you want to get back into another room or this room, um, you'll open it up again from your toolbar once you're in the room. Um, and then you'll just go back to the main Zoom room where you can go into another breakout room. So I just opened all of the breakout rooms. If anyone needs help going into a breakout room, um, just feel free to let us know. You can unmute or you can put it in the chat and we'll manually move you into a breakout room. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Bree.